even if a fraction of your statistics are correct, it's a, a, a frightening uh, uh, scenario. To think that maybe 65 people were murdered uh, for their organs uh, is mind-boggling, to say the least. Um, but as this committee will be dealing with, uh, and you're representing the Falun Gong here, I think I would like to put it on the record that uh, my human rights stance would be on behalf of the prisoners who should have their rights too, no matter whether they're Falun Gong, whether they're Christians, whether they're ordinary, decent criminals, as we call them, uh, or um, uh, Uyghurs or, or, or other minority uh, groups in, in, in China. Um, and I suppose the only thing that mystifies me is, because I do know a little bit about China, and I've been there a couple of times, is that it's becoming more and more sophisticated, westernized, and freer than in the past. And notwithstanding the amount of censorship that exists, there is still an am amazing amount of freedom of movement through the internet between people. And I suppose the mystery for me is, um, you know, we've had a lad from the United States of America do a runner with information about American surveillance, and if you've got thousands of people working on projects like that, someone is eventually going to spill the beans. What amazes me, though, is um, given the, the openness that is developing within China, that there's no apparent um, uh, greater degree of evidence uh, by Chinese people are being used, say, by example, for political purposes by Taiwan against the mainland. Um, so my, my question really is, do you accept that Chinese citizens have become, in the, in the recent past, more rights conscious, that there should inevitably be from the freedom of access to their is it, their internet network. Uh, this debate going on in, 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 in China as against sort of you coming to Ireland and, and, and convincing us that these abuses exist. So look, for any prisoner, anybody to be to be to have their you, you know we carry in the West, we carry our donor cards. Uh, and uh, this word uh, just to conclude Chairman, this organ organ tourism you are aware that we use extensively organs from England. Uh, Great Ormond Street Hospital would be one for uh, paediatric for children and other hospitals. They network internationally to provide organs for which uh, a country uh, is in short supply. So we would love the Chinese to use the voluntary, Chinese, the, the voluntary uh, gift of life donor system. So look, my question really is, as a Westerner and looking at China, and seeing it's the second most powerful economy in the world, and seeing it moving, blossoming economically and everything, why there's not the corollary of the people able to at least communicate all of this within our own society? Thank you very much indeed. Uh, you know, I, I, can I do an uh, imitation of a failed Western politician, John Edwards? You know, there are two Chinas. Uh, you know, there are, and there really are. There are two Chinas. I mean, there is a China that we see and that uh, I've operated in too. I, I lived in Beijing for, for years. Uh, the fact is, you, you, we mentioned the freedom of the internet and so forth. Well, you know, in 2009, July 2009, just a, the anniversary is just about now. Uh, all of Xinjiang was cut off from the internet for nine months. Literally, the whole thing shut down. Massive area of the country. Uh, didn't matter. And the impact on business, of course, was unbelievable. But uh, it was done. Uh, so I would have to say that I think it's it's it is a very different picture in in different provinces and different places. That we're in many cases talking about almost a, a series of different kinds of nations. The other thing is that obviously people are. Yes, they are. I think there is some rights consciousness that has grown. I think the Chinese people get more sophisticated every day, and I think having some money in their pockets helps a lot. Uh, it is also true that the ability, the self-suppression, the self-censorship uh, that has been promoted by the government is incredibly successful. So certain issues are not touched at all, and this is one of them. Having said that, you know, after Bo Xi Lai went down, uh, was, was arrested and, and so forth, uh, and the leadership crisis was in full swing, an interesting thing happened in the middle of the leadership crisis, which is they opened up for one night only the words live harvest, searchable on Baidu, which is their Google, and uh, live, live organ harvest. And basically for one night you could read anything, and lots of people did. They read Kilgore and Modis' stuff, maybe some of them read my stuff. What they mainly read was congressional testimony, the people who could 
who could uh, speak English, read, read a lot of American con congressional testimony, and they came back convinced. Now, that was some kind of stunt that was being pulled off by one faction against another, probably saying, how far do you want to go with this? Anyways, you want to drive the Communist Party down? What's the deal? The, the issue here is, is uh, this is still a very, very controlled state. I mean, that's the bottom line. And, and of, of course, the NSA is, is looking at a lot of things. And there, there's no question about that. that there's surveillance going on all over the world. The difference here is the surveillance has massive consequences. I mean, definitely consequences for those who, who, who really slip up. Uh, and having said that, Falun Gong, uh, it was an extremely powerful and strong movement and surprisingly adept at, at surviving, okay, for many years. And so that, from the Chinese perspective, they became a toxic asset, which had to be really destroyed. And you couldn't even release them from prison. So this has been a, a problem all throughout this system. Sorry, I don't think that was a great answer for me. No, no, that's fine. Um, Deputy Heady. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, look, um, first of all, thanks for the opportunity to, to speak, uh, you know, a non-member of the committee. Um, and just to apologise for the late arrival, I was at another meeting, but I have been kept updated on this issue by a constituent from, from uh, Cashel. Uh, and I have just one question, and, and maybe you now this might have been covered already, but um, if I could just ask, what, what steps, what specific steps are our visitors uh, asking the committee and the government here to do in relation to this issue? Please. Okay. Well, uh, the, uh, I think there's a number of different things that uh, could be done. Uh, I mean, a, a resolution would be helpful. Uh, the uh, simply uh, calling for an independent investigation, which uh, through through the United Nations, which uh, many uh, petitions have done. Um, a asking uh, the uh, Americans to release what Wang Lijian told them when uh, he was at the Chengdu Institute, the extraterritorial legislation, uh, the, the, the uh, drug uh, e exports, uh, the Confucius Institute, the uh, I immigration uh, uh, controls. Uh, and there's a number of uh, different ways of approaching the problem. Uh, the, uh, I, I think what's important is, is not necessarily choosing one over the other, but choosing something in order to show that you're aware of the problem and you're trying to come to grips with it. I mean, even, uh, uh, e even if it was just to take the matter to the European Union and to try to get them as a, a, as a group to deal with it, uh, because uh, frankly, I think the, uh, Brussels is looking for some leadership at the periphery before it gets started on it. Uh, uh, you know, I've appeared uh, before the Scottish Parliament and, and the UK Parliament, and the and, uh, UK is looking to Ireland and Scotland. Uh, the, uh, I, I mean, you may feel here you're a small country and what can you do, but uh, from the other perspective, uh, the larger countries feel, well, you know, a smaller country has more freedom of action and is less likely to suffer repercussions, and I mean, you may feel in relation to China, you seem small, but of course China has the same attitude towards you. You seem small to them, and uh, therefore they're, they're not that uh, concerned necessarily about what you're going to do. And, uh, and uh, so uh, I would say, I mean, we can give you a list of things to do, but uh, I would say you don't necessarily have to work through everything in the list. Just do something. Okay, uh, Senator Marku. From Albert Kahili, uh, uh, as a person who has um, visited China on several occasions over a very long period of time, I have witnessed the progress that has taken place there towards openness. But I do think the area of human rights is still a very murky uh, area. And the presentation which we've heard here today talks about a very, very barbaric practice uh, when Antishuk was going to China, I wrote to him on that occasion and asked him to raise the issue of the Falun Gong because I do believe we can raise issues with governments without necessarily changing good relationships with them. And I think at times we're a little too cautious and a little too careful. That's not just our government. This applies, unfortunately, uh, to all governments at the present time. But this issue is a totally different issue. And I'm just wondering from your own experience, I think it's good, incidentally, that you're coming before 
an arm of government today in the Rockters Committee here, and hopefully it doesn't finish uh, within this room. And the message will go out to the decision makers in China that this type of dialogue is happening. But from your own experience uh, in the world, and I notice you have an international uh, network as well. Do you find any breakdown in the reticence of government or government agencies to engage with what is possibly one of the more serious cases of human rights abuse that one could chronicle at this particular time? And secondly, what type of status do you have in engaging with some of these agencies? Because it seems to me uh, there is goodwill towards what you're saying to us, but there's an urgency also about it because I suppose the longer we procrastinate on this, the more innocent people are going to die. So I'm just wondering again, do you have international connections that you can promote the case which you're making here today? Could I just add to that as well in relation to the US? Um, obviously, this has been discussed in Congress and discussed in the Senate, uh, etc. I know a good, good colleague of mine, Chris Smith, has raised this uh, many, many times to the Chinese. Um, has it been raised at higher level? Has Secretary of State during her previous Secretary of State during her previous visits to the China uh, raised this issue at, at high level? And what's the official line from the Health Ministry in China in relation to? Um, this um, organ uh, harvesting? Um, yeah, well, um, that's a number of questions at once. But uh, in terms of uh, uh, breakdown in reticence, uh, one thing uh, I should say uh, is that the issue automatically comes up uh, because the Universal Periodic Review at the UN Human Rights Council every three years, and China's coming up October 22nd this year. Ireland is now on the Human Rights Council, uh, and uh, this is an opportunity for Ireland and, and every country to, to raise this issue and raise it publicly. Three years ago, only one country raised the issue of Falun Gong. That was Canada. Uh, the uh, Many countries raised peripheral or related issues, freedom of religion, death penalty statistics, uh, the re-education through labor camps. I mean, there's a lot of different ways of dealing with the issue, and, and one should uh, take advantage of that. Uh, the UN, through the UN Rapporteur on Torture and Religious Intolerance, and the UN Committee on Torture have all dealt with this issue, and, and, and I think uh, that's helpful. The United States Department of State, through its country reports, dealt with it for the first time this year after the Wang Lijian defection, uh, but uh, they, they have certainly uh, kind of uh, uh, taken that, that step. Uh, I've been, uh, well, working this file now for uh, seven years since our report first came out. And uh, this is my second appearance uh, before an uh, Irish Parliamentary Committee. Uh, I, I don't know if anybody was here in 2007 when I was here last time, but uh, it's, it's great to be back even if the, the, the people have changed. Uh, and, and what I've found uh, over the years is that there's an, an increasing willingness to do things, that people are becoming more familiar with the issue. Uh, and 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 more of a willingness to, to confront China on this. Now, if you ask what the Chinese government response is, well, when it comes to Falun Gong, uh, I mean, it's it's as bad as it always was. I, I mean, they. Uh, you know, I, I, I certainly accept and endorse what Ethan Gutman says about two Chinas, and the two Chinas I see are the state and the party. Uh, I mean, there is the state apparatus which we all see, and what we don't see, but which is really running the show, is the party. And, and every state function has a party instructor func instructing uh, uh, the, the state functionary, and, and that's all done behind closed doors. The, the party doesn't issue uh, edicts. I mean, they, they've got a propaganda campaign uh, against the Falun Gong, and, uh, and they've got this apparatus called the 610 uh, office, which is running the persecution. But uh, it's 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 something behind closed doors. It's 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 not a, a, a public function. So that we in the West may not even see what's going on in terms of what the Communist Party is doing. We we just uh, I mean if if we're used to understanding China, seeing uh, the after effects. Now the, the front person on organ harvesting over the years has become Wang Jiefu, who is Deputy Minister of Health, and now he's in charge of a special organ transplant. Uh, 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 institution in China. 
Now, when we first did our report, the initial position of the government of China was all organs were coming from uh, donations, uh, even though there was no donation system. Uh, Wang Jiefu is, a, is, is a, a little bit more sophisticated than that. So he acknowledges, and he's got the whole system to acknowledge, everything is coming from prisoners, uh, pretty much. Uh, but he's not prepared to admit it's uh, coming from prisoners of conscience. Uh, until recently, when asked about Falun Gong, he just would say nothing. Uh, although the questions have become so persistent, he, he finally uh, denied it uh, for uh, obvious political reasons. The, uh, the, the official Chinese line uh, is uh, we uh, know that, we're, that we are sourcing from prisoners from organs. We accept that sourcing organs from prisoners is wrong. W give us time and we will get off it. Uh, I mean, they, they've got this, uh, as, as, as Ethan has said, this kind of little bargain, forget about what we've done in the past, help us get to where we should be in the future. Now, I mean, obviously, myself as a human rights advocate, first of all, I would say, I mean, I appreciate your comment about international institutions, but human rights do not belong to international institutions, they don't belong to governments, they belong to individuals everywhere around the world. And, and the way you assert human rights is for people around the world who have these rights to assert them uh, and, and not rely on uh, institutions or, or, or or, or governments, uh, but the uh, and so I mean I'm not I guess you could say strategically and both temperamentally uh, inclined to avoid confrontation with China. But uh, I mean if you were so inclined, uh, I mean there were uh, there are ways to push this file that way by. Uh, saying, okay, we'll help you get off sourcing organs from prisoners, or okay, we agree uh, China should be a priority and we'll stop uh, uh, transplant tourism, which are, are both in line with the Chinese agenda. Uh, and, and so there, there are different ways of uh, pushing. Uh, I mean, I myself, as Ethan, wouldn't accept just, I mean, it would be a, 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 certainly a better world if China were to stop sourcing organs from prisoners, but it's not enough. Uh, because they have to acknowledge what's happened, they, they have to punish the wrongdoers, uh, and, and I wouldn't be happy just with that, but that's certainly something worth pushing for, is ending the sourcing of organs for prisoners, with which China would agree. Can I just add a very quick statement on that? And the, the, specifically speaking to the American, uh, sort of, uh, the question of what's, what's the movement in America. Well, you know, the State Department did, has mentioned this for the first time, and as I said, that seems to be in response to the information that Wang Lijun brought with him. Uh, to the Chengdu consulate in the middle of the night. Uh, but it's also true that uh, 106 congressmen did sign a letter, dear colleague letter, to the State Department, which was quite explicit, said, you know, we have information that Wang Lijun was involved in live organ harvesting, probably of Falun Gong. You know, give, this informa give us this information. Uh, now, a few years ago, I would have said, well, the State Department will never move on that. Now, I don't know how they're going to respond because uh, things have shifted, and I can't quite explain why, but there's a, a lot more uh, uh, passion about this issue in Congress. Uh, it, you know, for example, Voice of America, which is, of course, congressionally funded, uh, you know, started reporting on organ harvesting for the first time. It's never done it before. It only happened this year. Uh, at the same time, I mean, part of this is China is entering a period of what pretty much most experts are saying, 3% growth. It's their recession came a lot later than everybody else's. Uh, so, you know, to some extent, there may be people may be feeling some leverage here that they did not feel before. Okay. Um, thank you all for, very much indeed for your very comprehensive um, um, answers to the members' questions. You can see the members are really interested in, in this issue. We regard it as a very, very serious issue. And I want to thank. Um, uh, Senator Norris uh, for, for, for his really keen interest in, in this area and um, I think we'll follow on now and, uh, with, with Senator Nor Norris's motion I think, I think you should say where you are because we, it's, it's, it's related to this so I, I received a motion from Senator David Norris which has been supported by deputies uh, Byrne O'Sullivan and Smith and members uh, will note that the motion was revised slightly from that of the original uh, that was submitted here. Uh, we've just uh, added the word forced in the last line of uh, your motion and um, Senator Norris uh, as well, so I'm sure you have no objection to that. Do you want to comment briefly, um, Senator Norris? I might have maybe suggest that we add something to that, mo to that motion as well, if, if, with your permission, um, in relation to our own membership of the Human Rights Council in yes. Geneva. 
I would welcome that, Chairman. Yeah. I think it's a very valuable suggestion. I'd like to say that I have no difficulty in accepting uh, Deputy Byrne's amendment. I don't propose to say anything uh, because I think the evidence is so very clear that I, don't, I, I would be very surprised if any of my colleagues voted against it, and it would be a great joy to me if this was able to go through unanimously without a vote. Okay, can I get you to move the motion, Senator? I have certainly move it. Okay, do you want me to read out the motion? Or do yes, you want... please. Okay. As amended with your addition. Okay, uh, okay. So, um, the Joint Committee on Foreign Affairs and Trade notes uh, that the Special Rapporteur of the United Nations on torture and other cruel and uh, inhumane or degrading treatment or punishment has issued two reports detailing allegations of organ harvesting in China, that the UN and the Council of Europe are planning to introduce a new binding international treaty to prevent trafficking in organs, tissues and cells, and have already issued protocols containing appropriate measures to combat the trafficking of human beings for organ removals and um, calls on the government to actively to support um, the UN. the UN, uh, the Council of Europe and initiatives. Uh, initiatives, including the UN Human Rights Council, which we're a member of. So I've added that to it. Uh, 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 to combat the practice of forced organ harvesting in China. So... Um, uh, do other members wish to um, contribute here to this? Senator Mullen. I just want to very strongly support the, uh, the motion. Uh, I think the, the uh, presentation by our visitors here today uh, makes it imperative uh, that, we, uh, that we strongly support this. And I hope that, you know, that there will be oppor an opportunity as well at the uh, UN um, periodic review uh, scheduled for October uh, you know, to, to, to uh, further uh, add uh, strength and support uh, to, to your campaign, because what, uh, what we heard from you today and what obviously what we've been reading is, is, is a, an appalling abuse of human rights. And I think every right-minded member of this parliament, I think, wants to strongly support uh, the, the motion put forward here by, by Senator Norris today, and I uh, compliment him and applaud him for putting it forward. Okay, it's, um, Deputy Byrne. Well, I, I don't know whether you require a formal seconder, but I'd formally second it because uh, I did ask for the... And I want to thank uh, Senator Norris for allowing the, uh, the word force to be added because there was, in my uh, opinion, uh, governments do harvest for medical purposes, you know, organs for transplant and that, so the forced one would be the important thing. Uh, and just to say that I think it's, it's quite right that we should use, now that we lobbied so intensively for a human rights commissioner and having got one, that we should now uh, use that, uh, his, his services in pursuing support for the motion. And I presume the motion then goes presumably to uh, the Minister for Foreign Affairs. Of course, the Department of Foreign Affairs, yeah, after, I, after we agreed, okay? After we agreed, yeah. Okay, okay. Uh, Senator Clune, who is a member of the Council of Europe Parliamentary Assembly. Uh, just, well, I was going to just uh, thank Senator Norris for putting the motion forward and to say uh, support it, and I'm glad that there is unanimity here, and to thank um, the witnesses today for, for the. For the briefing, I remember you being bef before this Iraq this, bef this committee before, even though I wasn't a member at the time. So I have been, um, in a sort of peripheral sense, aware of the issue. So it's very enlightening to actually have your contributions today, and to have the documentation surrounding it. So I look forward to further developments in the area. I see. Sure, you'll probably, uh, you will follow closely on the Council of Europe. In the Council of Europe, yeah, I will do certainly okay. because it's um, as I, I, I think I'm the only member of this committee that's also Council of Europe. So I've. Two hats to wear on this one. Very important. That's why I highlighted you, Senator Clough. Thank you. I know you're a member of the Council of <laughs> Parliamentary Assembly. Um, Deputy Crow wants to. Just, uh, I suppose the, the this whole, whole idea of harvesting people's organs—it's like something that like I'm fond of uh, science fiction, but this is, you know, the ultimate horror that anyone, you know, any human being would c contemplate coming up with this uh, type of policy. Um, I did agree initially to the proposal by Senator Norris, and I have no problem uh, supporting this. Originally, when uh, I suppose when we were talking in terms of uh, another uh, human rights violation, the Majinski case, we talked in terms of uh, inviting the ambassador in at that time. I don't know if this is uh, possibly uh, a good reason, maybe to invite the Chinese ambassador in in relation to this issue. But I certainly I think we should uh, inform the, them uh, officially of if this motion is passed that uh, of our concerns and the concerns of this committee. 
Okay, we can um, send a copy of the motion as well, I presume, to the um, Chinese embassy. I know the ambassador is indisposed at the moment anyway, so uh, but we can send it to the embassy in, in China as well. What was um, agreed, this motion that was agreed today at this meeting. Is that okay with members? Yes. All right. Now, just uh, to conclude on that, so I just I propose that this motion be forwarded to the Department of Foreign Affairs and Trade, as agreed, and also to the Chinese Embassy. Is that agreed? I agree. agreed. Okay. And, uh, it's an issue that may arise at European Union level or whatever. Maybe to the Department of Health as well. Okay, we can do that. Just uh, are members agreeable to that. Okay, now can I again, I want to thank you sincerely for, uh, for coming before us uh, this afternoon for highlighting this very, very important human rights issue. And as you can see, there was a, a full attendance of members and also members, uh, non-members of the Foreign Affairs Committee like Senator Marku and Deputy Healy, who, took a, who have taken a keen interest in this area as well, as I'm sure there are other members as well. Um, but this is our remit, this is our forum, and um, I think uh, we've had a very constructive debate and a very interesting debate. And obviously, uh, when we're dealing with um, these matters again, the committee will, will certainly raise these issues uh, 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 now that we're well aware of what's happening um, in our discussions with uh, Chinese politicians or whatever. So thank you very much indeed for uh, coming before us. And um, we now move on to um, EU scrutiny in private session. Okay, so okay, just thank you. Yeah. Just thank, you thank you very much. Thank you.